Welcome to Quantrix Modeler Introductory Training. I'm your host, Rich Lopez, Quantrix Authority on YouTube. I sincerely appreciate you joining me for training, and I think it is going to be worth your time to participate in this training. I've tried to make this training as user-friendly as possible with its accompanying workbook that will provide you step-by-step -step instructions on how to perform the exercises, which will really give you the foundation of how Quantrix works and how you can become a Quantrix master because I truly love Quantrix and I want to make you a Quantrix master and have you be able to do at the end of this course is listed here I'm going to use the edge method to teach you so that you may learn and what the edge method is is I'm going to explain demonstrate guide and enable you with the accompanying practice exercises and practice workbook to be able to do the following work with structure as far as creating structure adding categories and groups linking categories documenting your model after that we'll then go on to working with logic where we have a handful of lessons there after working with logic we'll talk about what it means to present your model in Quantrix we'll talk about filter trays and synchronizing your views and creating presentation canvases maybe how to export and print your model after that we'll talk about working with data how to bring in uh, data into your model after you've maybe created the structure already then we'll talk about some of the fantastic functions of Quantrix these are truly powerful functions as far as using as and the select statement as well as case after that we'll touch briefly upon scripting and then uh, our lessons generally will be complete I will then provide some general overviews of some of these additional Quantrix in additional topics of Quantrix such as timeline conditional formatting uh, the cloud and so on so the goal is really to have you master these 25 lessons and then provide overviews for the additional project uh, projects or <laughs> additional topics I certainly believe that you will be able to uh, use you will be able to do anything in these 25 lessons at the end of this uh, course that is the goal and I have the accompanying workbook that you've been able to download and it gives you really step-by-step -step instructions on how to do every one of these lessons everything that's listed uh, Quantrix modeling goes try to keep this one in the back of your head it is the Quantrix modeling methodology okay you need to understand your business question this isn't necessarily anything revolutionary right but if you understand what your problem is of the business that you're trying to answer that's a great starting point right that's that's ultimately the goal is what's our business problem and what questions are we asking about it or what are we trying to solve after we're able to establish that and we're gonna say for instance here in all of our exercises in the accompanying workbook you want to create a top-line profit and loss statement for several lines of business businesses and these lines of businesses happen to be utensils like forks knives and spoons cups and plates and you want to do that by quarter by uh, by year okay so that's really kind of a, a business statement that we would say I want a top line profit and loss statement by quarter by year for my lines of business okay well what we do after we have uh, we've got an understanding of what the business problem is here at point A we can then move on to point B and we can identify what data we have available and you know that that may be help us helpful in helping us define some of our structure for building out a Quantrix model okay so if we identify the available data uh, that is available to us and that could be from various data sources maybe that's some manual entry it, it doesn't really matter at this point then what we need to also identify is the dimensions of that data and what I mean by that is what are our lines of business going to be uh, are we what is the time that we're going to be looking at is it by month by year is it going to be maybe by week or by quarter okay is it going to be by region uh, even going to the profit and loss statement is it just gross sales are we going to be looking at costs of goods sold right those are all dimensions anytime I use that word buy 
okay, that preposition by and say, I want to see profit and loss by year, by quarter, by line of business. So I had by year, by quarter, by line of business. And even by P&L line, I could say, there's four, uh, kind of four dimensions I'm talking about there. Once I have identified those dimensions, then what I can do is we can go out and we can develop main logic and structure. And again, this is all going to make sense as we work through the examples. But after we've made, uh, we've developed our logic and our structure, then we go ahead and we test that with just a very sample data set. It doesn't have to be a huge data set that we're pulling into our model. It can be very small. And if, if we can get the logic, uh, working with just a small sample of data. Uh, the beauty about Quantrix is, is then we can bring in the entire data set and Quantrix scales very easily, very seamlessly to make that happen and it works really uh, beautifully. Uh, and so once we've got our, our logic kind of built and we've tested it with a data set, we can even refine that logic before we bring in the entire data set. Okay, so we'll refine it and so once we have this model logic and structure built then what we need to do is we need to import the entire data set okay once we import the entire data set we review and validate the model we just make sure that it's working correctly and generally it should be working correctly if we built out our logic here in c d and e correctly okay and again if we're having a hard time with c d and e we need to go back to b and really identify our dimensions Okay, so once we've imported our entire data set after we've got the logic built out and we review it, we can create presentations off this. Again, we're going to show how to do that. You can then analyze your results. You can look for relationships and whatnot. And then ultimately, you have to ask this question. Did we address the business problem or question? If the answer is no, well, I don't know if we understood it quite correctly. So let's start back here at step A. But if we did address the business problem, yes, then we can make a decision based off of what we have. And then you know what the beauty is? We can continue using this same model, okay, that we built up here by just updating with new data, importing back into the entire data set. We review, we may need to tweak some logic, but generally not very often. And if it's built really uh, with with this methodology, yeah, you shouldn't really need to to make many tweaks in the logic and again you can just continue this cycle and so on and so forth uh, using this new way approach and how you ought to start building out your models within Quantrix. As far as, far as uh, you know a two-dimensional spreadsheet versus Quantrix here are some of kind of the differences or kind of how maybe they relate even though Quantrix is really not a two-dimensional spreadsheet right generally most of you will be familiar with using a, a two-dimensional spreadsheet so here is kind of a, a, a loose comparison between them so again with a spreadsheet what we do is we take our data we create a presentation and then we work on our logic and then we build out our structure okay uh, we have worksheets we have cells we have cell coordinates like a1 through B52. Uh, we have one formula with one cell and then we have uh, formulas that are inside the cell meaning uh, every cell has a formula. If it, needs to if it needs to have a formula the formula has to be in the cell right whereas in Quantrix what we do is we start with the structure we build out this kind of we think about it really first and we build out the structure and then we build out the logic of how the structure is going to relate and what is our logic based on that structure then we can create a presentation uh, and how we want to present the model and then what we do is we can then import all of the data and uh, we can have it work you know whether there's just a sample of data or the entire data set if we've built out the structure and logic correctly it will work beautifully okay and there's no rework uh, so instead of worksheets we have matrices and we have views and we'll talk about those instead of cells what we have is categories items and item groups and instead of cell coordinates like uh, equals you know a1 plus b1 or a1 times b53 uh, in Quantrix, it's really a natural language label. So if I want to say, well, I want my uh, gross sales to be 10%, to have a 10% growth, 
that's found in the assumptions matrix. I can just say, you know, uh, gross sales equals uh, gross sales of the previous year times uh, the assumptions matrix rate. So very, very natural language uh, formula writing. We have one formula that calculates many cells. Uh, generally, I like to think of this point a little bit if you if you are maybe an advanced Excel user it's kind of like an array formula okay uh, that's the way Quantrix works it works off it's just writing these these formulas and they are across arrays okay uh, and then I have a central location for formulas in an, an Excel spreadsheet you could have you could have uh, formulas everywhere from a1 to to the end of the spreadsheet and you wouldn't know it whereas in Quantrix uh, you know exactly where your formulas are at because they're located